parents? And... Well, to begin with, for the transcript, my name is Thomas C. Barnwell, right. Jr. And uh, my mailing address is Post Office Box 21057, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And zip code is 29925. And uh, I was born on Hilton Head Island, mm -hmm. June 2nd, 1935. And uh, my mother was born here. My father was born here. My mother father was born here mm -hmm. on the island and my father well my mother father and mother were born here on the island wow. also my father mother and father were born here on Hilton Head Island now my grandmother mother came from the O'Kitty, Maine, across, across in Jasper County. Mm -hmm. She was three-fourth Indian, mm. okay? Um, and uh, so when my parents and their parents were born, there was no bridge to Hilton Head Island, mm. okay? When I was born on Hilton Head, there was no bridge. Mm -hmm. There was no electricity. There was no running water, okay? Um, we went to school at the community schoolhouses in each section of the island. Mm -hmm. There was a community schoolhouse that offered public education from uh, grade one to six, well, in the community schools, in the, each neighborhood school, they went to fourth or fifth grade, somewhere in that fourth or fifth grade, because it changed after a point. Uh, then, uh, Sixth, seventh, sixth and seventh grade during my time was over uh, close to where the new hospital is located now on what's called Beach City Road now. Mm -hmm. And after that, you were on your own as far as public education is concerned. If your parents did not have funds to send you to Penn School, mm -hmm. which was a boarding school mm -hmm. uh, at that time, um, normal agricultural and industrial school, mm -hmm. uh, then there were persons that, that had relatives in Savannah that sent some persons there. Mm -hmm. For many of the young ladies, if they had an opening for a work study environment, uh, then many of the young ladies would go to Mather School, mm. which was a boarding school. But that was in Savannah? No, no, oh. that was in uh, Beaufort, mm -hmm. over in Beaufort, mm -hmm. in the city of Beaufort. Uh, there was what was called Mather School mm -hmm. for Young Ladies, which is now called the Technical College of the Low Country. Mm. That's mm -hmm. where that facility is now. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when I let me go back to the bridge part. There were no bridges. Therefore, those of us that left the island, for example, my father went to Penn School. So it was not a problem for the decision for the decision to be made for me to go to Penn School. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, very clear that's what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so the school actually uh, quit operating as Penn School in 1948. Therefore. I got 
one year short of being uh -huh. able to graduate from the old Penn School. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, in, and I was able to live on the campus, on the grounds. Uh -huh. And in 1953, uh, that was, that was the last class to graduate from the old Penn ground, and the class of '54 graduated from the what's called what was called then the St. Helena Consolidated School. Mm. Okay, but we went through a major portion of what on Penn's ground, and mm -hmm. I lived on the campus and until two and a half years before the school, before the dormitories closed. And then I moved out in the community with a family, not only mm -hmm. myself, but all of yeah, those about, yeah. who, yeah, were, yeah. who were there. We yeah. moved out into the community with families that, that our parents knew and made connections for us. And I lived with the family of Benjamin and Wilhelmina Barnwell in the Eustace section of, 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 of Ladies Island mm -hmm. and, uh, and completed, you know, my time at Penn School over there. Mm -hmm. um, and Benjamin Barnwell was the first black county agriculture agent. Mm -hmm. So I had the experience of, of, of being in an environment of major leadership mm -hmm. and a very good environment because yeah, he was yeah. friendly with my father, okay? They weren't related. Though. No, uh -huh. no. It was quite a coincidence. Yeah. And, of right. course, we still have very close family ties even today. Yeah. Um, so, and that has been a very good ongoing adopted uh -huh. family relationship for all these years. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did your uh, uh, parents do? Did they farm or fish or what? what was okay, that? my my mother for many years uh, was the only licensed trained nurse on Hilton Head. She delivered babies. Mm -hmm. She took care of all kinds of cuts and bruises and mm -hmm. all kinds of things mm -hmm. um, and of course uh, I, w I had the experience of listening to her as I would take her to do the follow-up visits mm -hmm. in the wagon wow. to the various uh, homes uh, she would say well I wish I could have a hematocrit done or you know various things mm -hmm. she would talk about, and I'd say, well, what's that? And mm -hmm. she'd explain to me what that was. And, and uh, then she would, uh, somebody come with a broken wrist or whatever, she'd talk about the need for x-rays and the need mm -hmm. for for sutures and <laughs> various things. And, you know, she'd put, find some, uh, she'd always have something in her bag to splint-type things to, to uh, put an arm back together or a leg back together until persons could get on a sailboat and mm -hmm. go off to Savannah or Buford mm -hmm. to, to get medical attention. Wow. Um, so, you know, uh, my mother also uh, taught uh, school mm -hmm. here on the island, right down the road here, mm -hmm. about less than a mile from where we're sitting right now. Um, and then my father did uh, some truck farming, and he did an awful lot of the hauling of the produce from the fields to the various points to get on the boats. Mm -hmm. And during the summers, uh, there was um, the Buford Savannah line at a point coming through, going from from. Savannah to Buford and return from Buford, go back to Savannah, and during the summer we would uh, haul mussels or mussels 
uh, from the bateaus and take them down and have them in bags and what have you and go down take put them on a boat and they'd mm -hmm. go up to Savannah. Mm -hmm. And then there would be certain things, grocery type things that would come from Savannah for various families on the island. Um, and uh, he had his truck would be responsible for picking those things mm -hmm. up and from the boat and delivering them to the various families. Mm -hmm. um, as well as the hauling of watermelon, butter beans, and all the other things to go on not only the Beaufort Savannah Line boat, but also to go on the sailboats mm -hmm. that sail from Hilton Head down to Savannah. Mm -hmm. We would haul, we would load watermelon all night sometimes, but depending mm -hmm. on the tide and uh, the time to get to get the boat load completed mm -hmm. um, to uh, to get the boat off and sailing early the next morning or mm -hmm. whenever that time was for the boat to sail. You must have known everybody on the, I mean, between these two, between your mother and your father, they probably, I mean, they play, they're playing these really key roles in delivering mm -hmm. services, yeah. health, yeah. And health services, but also then delivering food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I knew because also we visited from church to church around on the island on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I did get to know, um, you know, the majority of persons coming up during my during my time, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, my father also was a funeral director, mm -hmm. um, and uh, he and one other person, uh, for many years, operated a funeral home here on the island. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did get to know uh, an awful lot of persons on mm -hmm. the island very at a very early age. Yes, and of course, um, my grandmother was very active um, after retiring. Well, I call it retiring, but after she no longer worked in the laundry service at Honeyhorn Plantation, um, you know, she was very active with church activities and what they referred to in those days. Um, as community societies, mm -hmm. um, the uh, Mother's Union Society that had regular meetings and uh, had major annual outings, uh, mm -hmm. what they would call, they referred to them as, as, as their annual celebration, mm -hmm. uh, their membership, and they would all dress in white and <laughs> have a major speaker and mm -hmm. a lot of good gospel singing and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, my grandmother was very active with that kind of thing. And um, she and uh, many of the uh, older ladies, I've referred to them now as older ladies, uh, in the in the community. And she would, my grandmother, I think, was, was one of the driving forces that uh, she would say, uh, well, when you grow up, you should be like, uh, like Florence Robinson's son Thomas, you know, he's he's a he's a doctor, and uh, actually he was. Uh, I didn't I didn't raise any questions of what kind of doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, she he went to school at Penn, and then after Penn uh, school he went to Hampton, and after Hampton uh, he went on and got his Ph.D. Um, in education, mm -hmm. uh, and he was, uh, to my knowledge, the first of Penn graduates to receive a PhD oh, wow. in education, and this was way back. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he taught in Charleston for a while at Avery, and then he went on and uh, joined the faculty at um, Alabama or uh, A&M. Mm -hmm. You know, had, uh, he worked at a shipyard for a while mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. during the war. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, but the point is that he continuously studied until he received his Ph.D. And uh, my grandmother would always push, you know, keep pushing me very hard, even though my mother and father did too, but my grandmother was yeah. really a 
you know, sort of a whip <laughs> kind of thing, uh, saying, okay, you know, you got to be somebody, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't be the cow tail, so to speak. Right, uh, right, that's right. the way she referred right, to it. You right, can't right. be a cow tail. You got to keep on going. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You do something. You got to do it well. Right. What was life when you were growing up? Maybe. What, what was life like on the island? Quiet. As a young person. Quiet, peaceful, um, and uh, very pleasant. There are certain things that that were unwritten, but um, as one grew up, uh, on Saturdays we would hunt rabbits and squirrels. Mm -hmm. We would uh, hunt rabbits with sticks to begin with at a certain age, mm -hmm. and um, we would, uh, it would be a, that would be a sport thing for us to do, to go out and the uh, broom sage is what what we call broom sage yeah. is just the grass going out there to uh, to hunt rabbit at the hunting during the hunting season with with a with a good uh, hickory stick or a good mm -hmm. um, good green stick that you would go and cut and then you'd have your own dogs and you train your dogs and six or seven guys from a given area would mm -hmm. would go out and put the dogs out in the fields and uh, we'd take different stands and mm -hmm, the rabbit mm -hmm. come out, you hit it hit it on the head or across the back with a stick and, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was fun. Um, so that was one thing we did. Um, uh, occasionally we would uh, during growing up we would different families had different uh, in house rules. Uh, my family would encourage me when I got to the age that I could handle the horse and the plow that I, I would plant a certain number of rows of, of butter beans and mm -hmm. I would get on the boat and go to Savannah and, and, and have the experience of, oh, wow. of, of, of uh, you know, you would work it and they would, the family would help you harvest it. And uh, you'd get on a boat and go to Savannah for the purpose of getting that experience of being able to, to sell that beans mm -hmm. yourself. So that was one of those additional things. Yeah. Then back to hunting when you got a bit older and um, you would, um, you, would uh, you would go out and, and like we live on the close to the Skull Creek area here. Mm -hmm. During the day, after um, it got hot to the point, the sun got very hot here then because we had no electricity and yeah. no, no air conditioning. Uh, so, uh, an older man, uh, he uh, had one of his legs amputated because of diabetes, and his name was uh, Paldo Orridge. He would, he would take uh, myself and a couple others in a bateau and he'd teach us how to roll the boat, he'd teach us how to cast the net and uh, we'd go out and set uh, lines for shark mm. during wow. the day with, with, with bottles, uh -huh. Clorox bottles and uh, set those lines out and, and we'd, we'd be out fishing with bottom lines mm -hmm. and uh, we could tell when the when the shark hit the bottle because we could see the bottle bobbing. Yeah. So we'd take up the anchor from wherever we were and we'd go and, and, and bring that shark in the boat. Wow. And um, then we knew he taught us where to go at a certain tide to cast the net to catch shrimp. And we didn't have refrigeration, so the food was fresh, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that fish, if we caught more fish and more shrimp than those in the boat, families could use, then it was an automatic thing that we shared that with, yeah. with, with the families uh, close by. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same for, for hunting during hunting season. Um, I can remember um, one prior to Thanksgiving, wild turkeys flew from Pinckney Island and came over to Hilton Head. And, uh, one of the young fellows down the road <laughs> uh, 
there were certain things when we were growing up that just, you know, you just saw them. And we saw those turkeys coming over because they were hunting over there. And they mm -hmm. came over to Hilton Head and they went down Talbot Graveyard. And uh, a guy named uh, Eugene Bryan, uh, he brought his dad gun and I got, got my father's gun. And we went down to the graveyard and uh, killed uh, 14 wild turkeys. Wow. That was the best wild turkey hunt I've ever had. And it was fun coming back to uh, the house to to clean those and to uh, yeah. Uh, and the same hold true with hunting of uh, of deer or anything else. Mm -hmm. um, when you would get more than the immediate family could use, then um, it was customary that you share it with with the neighborhood. In terms of um, of recreation, certainly uh, we uh, we played ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we didn't always have a ball that was that was uh, a traditional ball. Sometimes we would make our balls from old tin cups uh -huh. and uh, we'd take the cups and beat them with uh -huh. a hammer and put moss around them and put uh, a piece of canvas around it and, uh -huh. uh, because canvas was always available because of sailing well, yeah. and uh, but we improvised with that and, and of course our, we didn't have uh, <laughs> baseball bats as traditional baseball bats but mm -hmm. we would go up in a tree and cut a limb and uh, and, and, and cut a piece of steak, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'd we'd make our bases uh, the best we could, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and we had our regular nine players. Uh, don't ask me how did I know, yeah. you know how did we know that we were supposed to have that? Yeah. But uh, yeah. you know, it, it it that that those kinds of things were our recreation, and of course we were required to go to Sunday school on Sundays and mm -hmm. go to church on Sundays, and we were. Um, those of us uh, that came up around Hilton Head, we were traditionally exposed to the Baptist religion, uh, the Methodist religion, and the Church of Christ mm -hmm. religion. And based on our families, we followed those patterns. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, the uh, religion pattern of uh, of of Baptists uh, followed the old tradition of going out into the wilderness, and of course, I went through that process mm -hmm. personally mm -hmm. to uh, to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I had my spiritual leaders uh, as uh, as as all other persons, and and um, went through that whole process of the prayer meeting house, and mm -hmm. uh, was baptized. Um, in the river down in Skull Creek, mm -hmm. and um, you know that's that's that was the pattern during that day, right, and right. Uh, that's the pattern that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. And um, we had uh, certain people in the community, like my family, did it was fortunate enough to have a battery radio, mm -hmm. and on Saturday mornings, uh, you know, after uh, you got through taking care of the cows and the horses and feeding the chickens and cutting the firewood, then you had an hour or so you could possibly listen to uh, the battery radio. Mm -hmm. Okay, And of course, if there was a big fight on the radio, then those of us that um, had radios, people would come over to your house and mm -hmm. listen to whatever, you know, <laughs> big event was going on mm -hmm. on the radio, okay? So uh, those were some of the patterns of coming up mm -hmm. on the island without a, um, without a bridge. And of course, you learn to swim um, sort of uh, without an instructor right. Um, right out in the water. Yeah. Uh, luckily, back to, in those days, we didn't have, I don't ever remember any drowning because uh, people did sort of uh, 
keep the buddy system of, mm -hmm. you know, watching you. You didn't, mm -hmm. you didn't just jump out then when you got to a certain age. Uh, you just moved up a little bit, and you could go down to Jenkins Island on a high tide and jump out there and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and swim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and luckily, sharks didn't bother people. We had no shark bites the to my knowledge. sharks come up in here on their own. Oh, yeah, out in Skull Creek, yeah. right out there in Skull Creek. They don't anymore. I oh, yeah. Oh, they they, still do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but they, they didn't bother people. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but those were some of the patterns of coming up. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday mornings, you would go to church. And um, depending on what service you went to, uh, people would ride their horses and go in wagons to a great extent. And then later on, there were a few more cars and trucks that would bring people to share in service at various mm -hmm. church services. Mm -hmm. um, so even before bridge, people started People had cars and trucks out here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Long before the bridge, um, people got... Um, well, that's true. Like yeah. Cars yeah. came in a mm -hmm. 55, mm -hmm. 55, 56 mm -hmm. was the bridge. And when something went wrong with the automobiles, there was uh, there were certain people on the island that knew how to, how to do certain repairs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they picked it up. It was a natural thing. Mm -hmm. And, of course... Um, here on Hilton Head, because sailboats was a big thing, there were certain people that knew how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, it's gone on there, but, um, uh, There were people who knew how to deal with making the mass for the sailboats. There were people who knew how to lay the keel for a sailboat. Mm -hmm. There were people that were very good at, um, you know, caulking the boats once the ribs were in and, and the boards were in place. Mm -hmm. And um, because, uh, and there were certain people who were very good at making sails for sailboats. Mm -hmm. So uh, there were certain people that were very good at doing the blacksmith work on sailboats. Um, and uh, so that, you know, we, we saw those patterns. See, I mean, in a sense, I was talking with, with uh, Mr. Campbell today about it, because you know, almost had kind of a self-sufficient, yeah. I mean, people really yeah. could make, yeah. and, I mean, there yeah. was very little in some ways that you yeah. needed from yeah. Yeah. from the mainland. Yeah. yeah, People had all these skills, yeah. you need kind of right. had, yeah. had yeah. The, enough people to do the certain things yeah. that needed. See, we raised hogs for meat, and, and as a young person, that's another thing. You had to, a certain time of the year in November, uh, when it started getting cold, you know, people would start the process of killing the hogs right. and curing the meat to last on through mm -hmm. until next season. And certain people would uh, cure their meat, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, you'd put that meat in the salt barrel at a certain time, and, and, and then after a certain number of days, uh, you'd take it out and put it on the tin roof up on the. And mm -hmm. the same with butter beans. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd put the beans on the roof, and the sun would take your shell from around it. Mm -hmm. And you'd uh, put those beans and peas in bags mm -hmm. and, and store them away. And, 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 and then after a certain point, you put them in a barrel, and it'd, it'd be a place in the house that so much beans there, so much peas there, you know, as well as the meat. And um, uh, <laughs> so, you know, people would, would share in that process with, with their children. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a normal part of life, mm -hmm. killing the hogs to kill the meat. Excuse me, put, putting the, the beans and the peas, um, preserve them for the purpose of, of having adequate food. Mm -hmm. and, and for vegetables, people would can, well, I call it can, but it was, it was uh, preserving Mm -hmm. snap beans 
as well as some green beans, as well as some green peas. Mm -hmm. And some people did greens, but mm -hmm. greens, normally people would have them growing yeah, all, all, all during the winter. Yeah. But uh, people would, uh, would, 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 would have a process by which they would, uh, would, would put things in glass jars yeah. and, and, and um, then put the glass jars in a large tub or pot, put a fire on it, mm -hmm. and the heat would seal those rings mm -hmm. and preserve whatever is in the jar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and during the winter months, whether it's tomatoes, that was another thing that people yeah. preserve, okra and tomato. Mm -hmm. And some people made a combination of shrimp, okra, and tomato. Wow. Uh, and put, preserved them in jars. Okay? And, um, and then there were other things, mm -hmm. other fruit like figs, mm -hmm. people would put in jars. Um, you know, a variety of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right, and right. people had shelves in their house mm -hmm. with food that they preserved during the summer for the winter. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was a family function that, you know, that was common. Mm -hmm. The people shared with each other, so I mean, the, the issue of the idea that there would be people hungry would, I mean, you, you wouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. No. 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 Yeah. 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 Kind of yeah. way in which the com yeah. communities, in a right. sense, is looked at, right. looked after each other. Right, right, right. Very much so, and people in the community shared in that yeah. process. For example, to to prepare the ground for raising of the f vegetables and foods uh, for not only for home use but for market purposes. If a person horse died, the person only had, if a person family only had one horse, that horse got sick or, or, or the horse died, the neighbors from all around would come in either a day or a half day mm -hmm. each and either physically, personally plow and help that person whose horse was not able to work, mm -hmm. um, uh, or they would each give that person their horse uh, and use, let that person use it um, to, to get the corn planted uh, or whatever. You know, person crop never went bad right, right. because the horse died, mm -hmm. <laughs> for example, okay? So people did work together mm -hmm. an awful lot, mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, of course, there were those that that during the um, during the winter uh, did an awful lot of oystering. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say oystering, I'm talking about harvesting oysters. And of course, it got real cold back in those days. So, you know, uh, there were certain mornings when it was cold enough for fish to be close to the show that that, that trout and bass and mm -hmm. some mullet sometime couldn't quite uh, swim away and, and, and you know, uh, especially if that was Saturday or early Sunday morning, it was tradition to go down to the shoreside and, mm -hmm. and pick up fish mm -hmm. and bring them on back up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there were, there were these automatic yeah. instinctive things yeah. that, that we just knew about and, um, and you did. Mm -hmm. And when somebody went down and found that there was a school of mullet, in a certain area, then somebody ran back up on the hill and passed the word on and mm -hmm. gang up on that area and we, mm -hmm. you know, cast in that area mm -hmm. until those mullets would oh, move or right. whatever it was there. Yeah. So that, I mean, you know, there was a working together yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah. The other hand, I was really, I was interested in this story of, of giving, the, you know, the young people a kind of a, a, a part of a crop or part of a crop to mm -hmm. look yeah. after and tend on their own. Yeah. Was that normal here or was that just something you think your parents did? Well, I, I, it appears to me that it was done by several other parents uh -huh. around here as well. Uh, no, I don't think it was just my parents. Uh, other, other folks, you know, I, I think had that uh, kind of pattern as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And so, what, what, when you would go to Savannah on these things, how did, what was your, uh, what did you, well, you got, what did you think about the, uh, well, one thing is what, what would happen with that, and then, kind of, what would you, well, you got, you got the, the, you got the opportunity of, 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 uh, <laughs> similar to, to what, what some young people do today, uh, go down to the, to the, to the, uh, grocery store and, and buy grocery, or you know, it's equivalent to that. Yeah, right. Uh, the experience was there to not just uh, raise the beans, peas. Um, some people allow their children to raise a cow. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, but you had the experience of caring for that crop. And you had the experience of, of going with it to market. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you got to market, you had the experience of, of selling it, um, sitting there and waiting till whomever comes by mm -hmm. to, to purchase it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you had the experience of earning your own money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, so it, was, it was a good process. Yeah. Yeah. Preparation for young people mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. What did you think when you when you went to Penn Center? How how did your sense of possibilities and things change? I mean, going off the island, staying off like that. Well, no, I wouldn't say it really changed um, an awful lot. Um, it, 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 it was uh, a new experience. Of course, we had the experience, many of us, of visiting relatives in Savannah off and on. Mm -hmm. And of course, Penn was not a total strange place to any of us because mm -hmm. we've had the experience of going over there uh, to graduations of mm -hmm. family members mm -hmm. prior to us going. So uh, it was, you know, I mean, it's just, it was just a matter of, of the adjustment to the dormitory life. Yeah. And, um, and uh, learning a greater discipline of uh, study habits mm -hmm. without someone in the house, like my mother would always say, well, did you get, you know, you got your, all your homework done, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that kind of thing. And of course, while we were there at Penn, uh, living in the boarding department, you know, we had responsibilities of various work tasks, yeah. uh, and you had to get totally accustomed to the responsibility of taking care of your own laundry, mm -hmm. because there was, you know, I mean, and there was a laundry room there on the grounds, mm -hmm. um, and of course, um, some some people, um, you know, were able to take on some part-time community uh, work off campus on weekends, mm -hmm. which which helped to give them spending change. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the Sunday. Uh, the thing that, that <laughs> now you mentioned, the thing that, that I thought about is we, we had the noonday meal on Sundays around noon, mm -hmm. and we didn't have, you know, they, they gave you fruits and whatever on your own for the rest of the day after that 12 yeah. o'clock large meal. Mm -hmm. and, and we had breakfast in the cafeteria. Uh, we'd have lunch in the cafeteria, and um, uh, every day, and supper as well. But on Sundays, that was the day that, you know, you, you didn't have but those two regular meals, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the part that I had <laughs> personally problems with making, making the adjustment with. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, but you know, you get over that kind of thing. As far as academic adjustments, uh, we didn't have the kind of library uh, system here on Hilton Head prior to. You know, we had some encyclopedias on the wall in the 
you know, there and certain other, mm -hmm. some minor resource books. Um, but uh, learning the adjustments of, of the library and, and uh, following through on um, doing research papers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. even back then, mm -hmm. and uh, the wide range of poetry and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of interesting to, mm -hmm. to begin to get into. And, mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, um, you know, it was, it was okay. Mm -hmm. What did you, uh, what at that point did you think you were going to do with your life? Did you have particular ambitions or goals? Or well, at, at a point in time, I thought that I would probably go to, um, uh, well, I, I was encouraged <laughs> by my father to go to, to school to, to be a funeral director, and I, I I didn't say yes or no. I thought about it, but I ended up going to Claflin College, as you see on my mm -hmm. resume, mm -hmm. for until the draft got up behind me, mm -hmm. and uh, for the army. Yeah. And I particularly didn't have any liking for the army. Don't ask me why. But I decided that if I was going to go to something, I wanted to go with what I cared to go with, and yeah. I thought I would give a shot at the Air Force. Oh, wow. And uh, so I left Claflin College when they somehow got word to me that my draft papers were <laughs> on Hilton Head and they were about to be mailed to me. And I said, well, fine. You know, I send the word back, yeah, okay, mail them on, but when they get here, I'll be gone. Uh -huh. So I went on and volunteered for the Air Force. Uh -huh. And about that same time, my uh, one of my uncles did the similar thing who went to South Carolina State College. Uh -huh. So both of us left and we went both to Texas to train. Wow. And, um, and I ended up, and, and of course it looks like there was a flood of guys uh, did the similar <laughs> thing about the same time. Yeah. And um, so uh, so I spent my three years, nine months, and 27 days in the Air Force uh, happily. Uh -huh. I went to uh, Texas, and I went to um, Texas again, and then I went to Puerto Rico, uh -huh. and uh, by way of Florida for a short, very short transition, and, and, uh -huh. and uh, so I, I spent most of my time overseas in in Puerto Rico where the weather climate was good yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, while being in, in Puerto Rico is when I really uh, had an opportunity to to do a lot of thinking and mm -hmm. um, and really began to formulate some some long and short-range plans mm -hmm. for myself and looking back and looking forward as well um, and when I got out of the Air Force, I went to school at Tuskegee Institute for a short while. But I had in mind, uh, I didn't have in mind to get married at that point, but by the time I got back, my folks were saying, well, you know, you need to start thinking about family uh -huh. and blah, 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 because, see, I was an only child. Uh -huh. And um, so I thought about that, and I ended up doing that, and then I worked as a longshoreman after um, my wife and I started our family very early. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, I met her at Tuskegee, and then um, and then uh, I came back here and I worked as a longshoreman for a while, and did some other things around here with the farm. We always mm -hmm. had cows and horses mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. have you. And um, then I was offered uh, a job with Penn Center mm -hmm. as the first director of community development mm -hmm. because I was then working hard with my mother and my first wife to uh, try to put together, because of talking with people in the community, a daycare center, mm -hmm. and um, 
the Seisloft at that time thought it was interesting that, and I, you know, took them over. We went over as a team, three of us, to look at the operation of the daycare center that was on Penn's ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I had known that that was going on, because I used to occasionally go back over and just mm -hmm. nose around and mm -hmm, visit mm -hmm. and <laughs> see what was going on. Yeah, because, <clears throat> and uh, so, some strange reason, people from all over applied, and I ended up getting that job. Oh. And um, I, um, I, I enjoyed that experience very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said that in Puerto Rico you started. You had a chance to do some thinking, look back, reflecting on mm -hmm. your on your past, and kind of beginning to think about the future. What what kinds of things were you thinking about? What 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 did? Uh, kind of well, I saw I was able to to when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, I had the opportunity to get out in the community occasionally, just to look around. Mm -hmm. And I saw areas where um, people had certain needs, and uh, those needs were um, available and accessible papers to newspaper to us in Puerto Rico. So, got a chance to look at that from a distance, and that uh, the situation of. Tuskegee with the gerrymander was going on about that time, mm -hmm. and it really, <laughs> uh, I personally didn't didn't feel that that the situation was as grim. The Gomillion versus Lightfoot mm -hmm. situation was going on, and I said to myself, "Well, if I'm going to go to college somewhere, maybe I." you know, throw myself close to mm -hmm. to that environment to take a look at what was going on there, mm -hmm. as well as in Puerto Rico having a chance occasionally to get a hop flight to go to some of the neighboring islands, uh, because I worked on the flight line and I was in touch with base operations, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. sometimes pilots would go out for a few hours airtime here and there, and I got to know the guys, so mm -hmm. I'd go for a ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting around out there in the Caribbean, you know, you got to see, you got to see a uh, real poverty. Mm -hmm. You got to see the those that did have and those that didn't have. And and I started thinking about back here on Hilton Head, mm -hmm. and about that time. By then, you know, uh, the ferry was here, and the bridge was here, and I started thinking that, you know, hey, you know, somebody's going to have to start yeah. really doing some things that the water needs, and the, you know. And I, I'd go out there and I'd see where the Puerto Rican government was doing a little bit for water and certain areas didn't have. And in the same situation that we're in today in parts of this island, yeah. things that I saw back then, yeah. and that was in the 50s. Yeah. Um, and business opportunities. And I started looking at it wide range of things and that that really kind of uh, got got my motor going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay in reality and uh, so when I was hired at Penn it really fell right into yeah. the niche of things that I really had a desire and some of the things that I really uh, felt that that need to be done yeah. and of course the majority of the younger ones, my age at that time, had gone to Boston, like uh, Emory is much younger than I, mm -hmm. but a lot of his, his sisters yeah, think, were, yeah. were gone. Uh, they went to New York, a lot of others went to New York. Mm -hmm. Well, th that's where the opportunities were, yeah. you see. And uh, for example, when I got out of the service between December and Jan November, rather, and January, uh, to get, I, 
I went to sign up for unemployment compensation, and they said, well, yeah, you get it, but and uh, to find it something to do other than right around the farm and what have you, the only thing that was available was digging holes. Physical work mm -hmm. for a person out of the service mm -hmm. was digging holes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did for, you know, a little bit of hole digging, a little bit of concrete pouring, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things, just to keep gas in my car, not to touch the money that I had put away to, to, yeah. to go to college. Yeah. And um, so I did it, you know, I, I did it, and uh, it was interesting. Um, and, but I could have gone to Savannah State right across the bridge, but I, I, I didn't. My, one of my uncles went and I cared not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but back to, to, to being hired at Penn, when I was hired at Penn, um, the, the job offer of, of working with community development consists of uh, a wide range of, of citizenship awareness, Mm -hmm. uh, voting rights, uh, which was coming into its real bloom during mm -hmm. that time. Of, mm -hmm. And of course, people had to read a portion of the Constitution or have an option if they could not read. They had the tax equivalent, okay, in, in real property. Oh, wow. Okay, and I, I found myself very heavily involved in that process yeah. as a part of the overall community development. Yeah. Um, helped uh, there were in certain areas, kids were getting sick from standing out waiting for the school bus in the rain, and uh, got myself involved with the process of helping to build school bus stop shelters in certain areas where the community got together and discussed that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we used to uh, meet with some of the young people back then and, and, and ask them some of the things they wanted to do. Uh, did they want to see certain kinds of films? And I'd uh, have a committee of four or five of kids and they'd look through books of films and say, okay, we'd like to see this about mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. leadership role. And, and fortunate enough, some of those young people are adults today in Bluffton Hilton Head area, some of them, a lot of them in Bluffton, mm -hmm. some of them in Burton, and some of them into businesses of their own. And they would look at me and say, you know, you're the same as where you used to be 30 years ago. You're still running around here now in an old beat up truck, mm -hmm. <laughs> encouraging people to do this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. You know, and I said, well, you know, um, somebody's got to do it. Awesome. Yeah, so, uh, and you know, and they laugh and we, you know, we get a few things done. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. now and then, not a hell of a lot, but we get some things done. Uh -huh. Yeah, and some of those people, young people, um, parents got involved with the whole process of comprehensive health, uh -huh. which came later. Uh -huh. The need, the, the need of identifying uh, health care would not have been as clear to me if I had not had the opportunity to be out in the community where I knew people did not have running water, yeah. where I was already involved with community development with helping to build outdoor toilets, yeah. sanitary pit privies, yeah. where the health department gave me the okay in this state, uh, a guy named Marsha, way, way back. Um, that he, he'd say, all right, you measure so many feet from the well, and it's got to be on a slope away from where the well is. And mm -hmm. he gave me all the criteria, written as well as verbal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I, it was to the point that any time that a person in, the, in certain areas would build an outdoor toilet, I would be a part of that process mm -hmm. of helping that to happen because people didn't, during back in those days, in in the in the fifties, uh, people didn't have even an outdoor toilet. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And uh, then um, in fifty nine, when the problem uh, was identified of intestinal parasites, it was very easily uh, clear to me that that this was certainly 
a real problem, yeah. not just in Bluffton, but, but uh, elsewhere in yeah. the county as well. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you're already identifying a lot of these things, working on these. Oh yeah. These ways yeah. Before, before that. Yeah. Yeah. What about the? How difficult was getting, uh, kind of pushing through voting stuff in, in this area, or get, getting people registered to vote? Well, it was it was uh, identifying the key persons not only in the community, but a combination of the community and the church. Mm -hmm. Church is. Mm -hmm. uh, once the spark was lit, it was easy. Uh, but it was sort of, uh, you know, something that, well, if you can get two or three people on this road, as well as two or three people that goes to this church or that church, and then the word would would spread. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you had, naturally, you had some people that, you know, didn't really care too much. But there were areas that people were more receptive and more eager mm -hmm. than than others. Um, so, um, you know, it was a, a, a continuous situation that just didn't lighten up. It just went on and on and on. Mm -hmm. um, there was always more to be done with that. Then there were those that that had a desire and an interest to go to some of the SCLC uh, leadership schools and, and of course because of the work involvement there had the linkage of, of doing, you know, mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, so the the kind of I mean one of the things we I was talking about this morning was the impact of television and kind of bringing the civil rights movement through television and radio and newspapers mm -hmm. into communities mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this around here. How mm -hmm. important that was for people. Yeah. To be able to yeah. Yeah. see that they were linking up. Right. With other, with, with other a bigger parts. picture. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, you see. Um, St. Helena caught on real early and did a fantastic job because Leroy Brown was the first black to get uh, elected since Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And of course, he, he was there on the county council when I went to work at Penn. Um, and later on, uh, because of, of, of a lot of the legwork that I did out in the bigger state area, uh, he's deceased now, Booker T. Washington, uh, later became elected to the mm. Buford County Council, and, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of that work I did with in the background mm -hmm. uh, with helping people to become registered and mm -hmm. and give him the majority out there mm -hmm. on the on on the books, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see. But that's publicly until today. It's not publicly known yeah, how it yeah. ha how it started happening. Yeah. You see, but that's and getting with people like um, Mr. Klein, who is deceased now, uh, out in that area, mm -hmm. and uh, getting with people like T. Rowe Jones, who was a moving force mm -hmm. in that community, mm -hmm. and uh, Jeff Grant, and many, 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 many others mm -hmm. um, in the biggest state, and and the uh, Dale, and uh, man out there. Um, David Barnwell, who we were not related either. Mm -hmm. He was a big farmer out there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, was I got involved with agriculture as well. Uh, for example, there were times that uh, once a year at Tuskegee they had uh, an annual agricultural conference and uh, among ag-involved people and and I used to uh, try to take one or two persons from this area down oh, there wow. to that. And so uh -huh. <coughs> there were these little mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. things that that, 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 that sparked, you know, mm -hmm. it, it kept you know, kept things moving. Yeah. You okay? see the fruits of them for a while, but they're... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, yeah. that's, I think that's true. Yeah. It's, it's all, a lot of those, I mean, sometimes going in like on a, 
announce and drive to do something, but a lot of times mm -hmm. the successes come from yeah. just the yeah. build up of yeah. all yeah. those yeah. yeah. See, you have to actually take sometimes people need to remove themselves from their instant environment mm -hmm. to go to take a look at what's going on in another area mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and have an opportunity to compare mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and have a chance to talk with other people from other areas right. And, right. And, and more come out of that. So that was a major part of what I did, try to find things that were happening in other places mm -hmm. of, of similar uh, kind of environment, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes it was 300 miles away. Yeah, right. <laughs> sometimes it was close to. Yeah. But uh, whatever, if it was SCLC activities in, in down there in Dorchester Center in Georgia, well, you know, drive a couple of people up there to spend a day, mm -hmm. uh, three or four people, uh, the voter registration conference. Let them see that there are people from. Other places. I mean, there were those yeah, kinds yeah. of physical, physical interchange mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that helped things to continuously happen. And of course, there were sometimes just getting people in touch from one end of the county to the other. Yeah. What was going on? You know, physically traveling with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh, and, and, you know, <laughs> simple things, are, which is a big thing now, like the matter of, of getting road paved or, you know, getting some drainage done, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. making sure you get to the soil conservation people or agriculture office to, to follow through on what's necessary and talking about the right-of-way. Mm -hmm. For example, on St. Helena Island, there was one area that needed a ditch and there was a loan program available through Agriculture Stabilization Conservation Services, and it was just a matter of getting the people together with the with the office people right. in order to get that done. Right. Uh, right. You know, <laughs> uh, there are all kinds of. What's interesting here is that, that that in a lot of communities, the transition from the civil rights movement, kind of on the emphasis on voting rights and desegregation, and then the kind of effort to start dealing with economic issues is, is fairly stark. I mean, I mean, it's a very, it's a, there's a real sharp line between when they did that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting here, I think you were, you were already really focused on some of these economic issues mm -hmm. in an earlier yeah. period, and yeah. looking at the relationship yeah. between the two, but also trying to get people organized around those things, not right. just these kind of formal right. issues like voting rights. Or, yeah. Not that they weren't important, but, right. you know. Right. And, of course, then later after the, um, you know, after that, then I, I saw through this same process of community development that the anti-poverty program was about to, to become into law, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and uh, then there was a need to organize, put together some organization structure to take advantage of that. Yeah. And then I got involved with that, and I worked with that. At that point, I left Penn, and then I went. This was back. in the mid mid sixties. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Early, early sixties. Um, then I went to work with that and helped that to Buford Jasper EOC, mm -hmm. you know. And there were several things like Head Start and, you know, the, the Fusky Island transportation bit. And yeah. See, so people just discovering the Fusky in the last five or six, eight years. See, I've been working. When I was at Penn, mm -hmm. I used to ride a horse from one end of the Fusca to the other. Wow. And you, sometimes I used to have to stay overnight, okay? It was too rough to come back, yeah. okay? And there were no phones over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man yeah. that used to, used to transfer me is sick in the Hilton Head Hospital this very day, Jake mm -hmm. Washington. Mm -hmm. His daughter just told me up the, up the street this mm -hmm. morning. But, um, you know, the whole matter of... Uh, of, of excuse me, making people aware of of programs, 
services and all that, uh, it's something that someone must have patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to have an awful lot of patience starting from where a person is, getting them to really move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to really be concerned and dedicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you have to prove to people that you're not in, out there to take advantage of them. How did, what was your sense about the possibilities of OEO? I mean, you, you seem to have, have been able to identify the, the potential for that for your community pretty well. How, how, did you kind of, how did you go about kind of Well, lis kind of listening as well as reading what was in the bill, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and that one, uh, I saw all kinds of potential, for example, the legal services. Uh, we put, tried to put that out there, and that didn't go too well to begin with. It ended up going to Charleston. Uh, did get, did get, um, did get some head start, and did get some job services going. You know, summer jobs mm -hmm. for young work, young people to work in various environments. Um, did get some community uh, coordinators for pe people to go out and and try to do assessments on uh, business needs and other kinds of needs. Didn't get a heck of a lot of businesses going, mm -hmm. but uh, did make some dents in that area. Um, out of that whole thing also came uh, some organization and leadership abilities of helping to get some shrimpers organized on Hilton Head, and they did get an EO, one of the only economic opportunity loan that was made to my knowledge in this whole uh, southern coastal area was made right here on Hilton Head. Mm -hmm. It operated for several years, and then... Uh, Several things happened. The guys didn't honor their marketing agreements and what have you. And uh, it takes it takes to to do a cooperative. I found out the hard way. It it takes constant education. Mm. It takes a professional person full time to work with a cooperative to make it work wow. in this area, mm -hmm. in this county, in this area, mm -hmm. because you have to live up to your marketing agreements. And it takes a full-time person working on cooperative education. Yeah. And if you don't have that for the first six to seven years, you might as well forget it, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. Not with the, not with a business as competitive as the seafood industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We tried it also with the oyster co-op, and it operated for a while, and then the guys started selling their oysters elsewhere. It's just, you know, the marketing, get, yeah, they trying they to get a better bark. Yeah. Not price. looking at the end results yeah. and the return and their investment, mm -hmm. build up of their investment mm -hmm. in equity, mm -hmm. you see. So uh, it, it's, it's an educational process. It's difficult. That's, that's interesting. It is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I would say cooperatives are good. I ended up... Uh, <laughs> being the regional director for a cooperative bank here in the same state, mm -hmm. covering this state, North Carolina, 12 southeast states. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was the, the only black to testify in favor of the bank. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you see? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I wanted to be sure that, yeah, that the records show that that, that, yeah. that, that testimony is there, yeah. you see? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, um, but my point is that again, these things will work, but it takes. You see, let me let me go back to you. The the colleges and universities that have the expertise have never really, except Clemson, in one case, sent a guy down here with a big briefcase when we reached our target. Uh, the second or third year on projection of shrimp marketing, mm -hmm. 
Um, he came down with his fancy briefcase and his necktie, walked down the dock and looked and said, oh, the place looks good. I understand you reach your marketing goal for the year. This was great. Mm -hmm. Never looked back, okay? Of course, now, I don't, I'm not sure that the fisherman would have accepted him had he looked back, mm -hmm. but had he been smart enough from Clemson, whoever it was during that time, to find a black person on their staff who could have constantly come down, mm -hmm. work with the fishermen, work with the office staff on a continuous basis, mm -hmm. and the same follow through with the oyster cooperative, those would have been thriving businesses today. Mm -hmm. And a person like myself who is trying to make ends meet, mm -hmm. you know, working out there, you know, on a continuous basis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, didn't have that time or the focus or the expertise at that point to, to really focus on that. Yeah. And this is where the universities, all of them, yeah. have fallen down. Yeah. Universities have fallen down sadly mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. They have the expertise inside of the campus. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get it all. But it just does not get out in the community. And until we extend our university knowledge beyond the mm -hmm. walls and the fences of the university campus, directly out into the community, where it should be, must be, needs to be applied. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, we're, we're training those in administration, mm -hmm. which is good, mm -hmm. but the emphasis needs to be reversed mm -hmm. as well. Not totally now. I'm not yeah. suggesting yeah. stop training on a college level. Yeah. I'm not, that's necessary, right. okay? Biostatistics and everything else that I've had to take yeah. is necessary, yeah. okay? But what I'm saying is, at the same time, the university needs to have a two-way program mm -hmm. where it focuses out in the community, mm -hmm. not just on cooperative education, but business management, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. business education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the guys that are ongoing and need to take advantage of those surveys. You know, there, yeah. there are carpenters, for example, out here right now that could do a better job in estimating jobs yeah. if they just had just a little bit of sharpening up on, on certain skills. Mm -hmm. they, they could increase their profits mm -hmm. and their productivity. If someone friendly from a university mm -hmm. division of engineering, architecture, or whatever would come out mm -hmm. and just say, hey, uh, I want to meet with five of you guys that are doing roofs, or five of you guys that are doing drywalls, mm -hmm. five of you guys that are doing foundations, mm -hmm. and on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Okay? You follow? Yeah, Do I make yeah. myself clear? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now, that's an industry where the university doesn't have to feel guilty about doing something because houses are desperately needed and they could work it in a, in a way that it could tie into some of the prototype houses <laughs> mm -hmm. that, ver that Farmers Home and various other organizations, HUD and whoever else now, mm -hmm. have dollars to work on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Do I make my, do I, yeah. I, I'm trying to make a point here yeah. in this process, yeah. okay? Yeah. All right, I'm sorry I went off on that tangent. No, that's but fine. I, I, I think that's great, I, 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 I mean, because I, I, I think this, this thing of working with small, and I mean, basically with small businesses and the kinds of skills and things that they need is something that these, that extension programs or nothing else in the universities or, you know, or any departments of the state government or federal government, they don't do that. And that's where... People are creating jobs. Yeah. I mean, that's where yeah. the lifeblood right. of most rural communities right. is right now. Right. See, and, and, and the prototype has been there. Mm -hmm. For example, the Agriculture Extension Service, okay? Mm -hmm. The home 
Economist mm -hmm. Service. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, it has changed naturally. Yeah. But what I'm saying, the basic pattern of the extension coming out from the universities, that pattern have been established since the 1890 colleges. Right. Or some before that, whatever. Okay? Well, in South Carolina State, I was just up in the archives two years ago. And back in the back room, they've got walls and walls and walls of the reports from the home demonstration agents and the agriculture extension agents. Right. They were working right. in the 1890s. Right. Right. Okay. 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 You, you, okay. All right. You see what I'm talking about? By my mental, I want yeah. you to plug into my mentality yeah. of reality here. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is, with some of these early release people from the military or whatever, and I'm not, I'm alluding to that. I'm not saying military release persons yeah. would be the greatest persons to put out in the field yeah. to do the kind of things that I was doing. It, you know, I went through an awful lot of, of adjustments yeah. to get to where I was. Right. And, you know, uh, people like Ollie Neal in Arkansas, who I've met over the years, right. had similar kinds of experiences. Right. As a matter of fact, we both had a 2010 John Deere Tracton. <laughs> yeah, right. I discovered at the same, right. close to the same time, okay? Right. <laughs> we both had, and I still have my green old beat up 71 Chevrolet pickup truck. Yeah. Whether he still has his now that he, He's about to be appointed as a judge. I don't know, okay? But no, we came from, we found ourselves working on community water systems mm -hmm. with the National Demonstration Water Project in Washington, helping to set policies mm -hmm. that had never been set for rural areas mm -hmm. before. And, and there's still a need for those policies to be sharpened and still a greater need now that water quality uh, have changed, mm -hmm. okay? The whole matter of, of wetlands needs to be addressed, not just from an isolated situation, but out here in the community now. People need to be aware that, that and what's going to happen to the land that the people can't build on mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. that they're still paying taxes on. Mm -hmm. it's an, these are issues that community colleges need to begin to explore and evaluate for the benefit and you find 99.9% .9 of those lands alike that fall in those categories will be where golf courses has been built mm -hmm. and the drainage on the other end has stopped up. Mm -hmm. The old, old drainage I'm talking about 40 years ago, mm -hmm. trees have grown up in them mm -hmm. and people have cut off the old drainage mm -hmm. and, and, and the water is just backing up on people's land. Mm -hmm and it ain't got nowhere to go, mm -hmm. and it can't go anywhere, mm -hmm. okay? So, I mean, there are, there are enough things pertaining to the real community environment right. that the university systems needs desperately to begin to take a look at, mm -hmm. okay? But it didn't, you know, I, I didn't just come to that mm -hmm. yesterday, yeah. all right? I mean, it, it, it takes years of of churning right. to get to those various levels. Right. You take the matter of towns uh, doing land planning and not having uh, blacks serve on the town's planning commission mm -hmm. and on the various boards pertaining to use of people's land. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. huh? It's happening all over. But it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right. And, and, and universities need to begin to sensitize. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and you'll find it here. See, we have a matter of segregation now in, in another format. Land planning today is the greatest of all segregation mm. in this world. Okay? In what sense? I mean, what, how you find any town that can show you that they have a total black and white staff yeah. working together with the black community yeah. in making decisions 
online use, mm -hmm. and I'll applaud you. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about I'm talking about plant land planning, integrated staff at the decision making level. Yeah. And you don't find that yeah. in the South. Mm -hmm. Okay. You might find it around Chapel Hill. Probably not even. <laughs> okay. But I'm talking about where people own land like on Hilton Head. Yeah. Okay. You will find even on the town council only one black person. That's not enough to make a difference. No. You at the university need to begin to re-educate people in government that this is an air if an air in history that if it's going to do what's right, it needs not to continue to do the wrong. Okay? It needs to start looking at its demography and saying, okay, <laughs> instead of the every 10 years revaluation in setting up, there needs to be some laws that when the town find itself where the population have changed, it kicks in automatically where there must be guaranteed slots in order that people's rights totally will be protected. The whole matter of homeless situation. As wealthy a country as we are, we shouldn't have that. Right, right. Let's go back to the script. Well, I mean, the hunger thing, too. I mean, the, one of the things in reading back through all these articles that when you had Hollands down here, you know, and, and kind of bringing attention to all that, thing, all that, yeah. There's just some study that somebody did last week just came out that the you know the, the amount of hunger kind of daily hunger in this country is back almost to the levels it was in the late 1960s. All right. So so, so you you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not a statistician now. Well, <laughs> I'm just a real com down to earth well, community that's person. Just, yeah, your sense is actually <laughs> okay supported by the statistics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're in yeah. some parts of the country when you. When you look at the whole country, we're in terms of absolute numbers of people in poverty, to in terms of hunger. I mean, you got all these increases in in basic in kind of diseases that we thought with tuberculosis and measles and all kinds of things that we thought we had beaten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With, because of the yeah. whole all yeah. kinds of different things right. going on, right. we're actually right. seeing those at back right. at levels that they were. Yeah. 20 years yeah. ago, 20, 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Well, I think that is the, one of the reasons. I mean, I hope that if there's any, if, if what we write and what comes out of doing a study like this is to being able to convince or being able to at least influence or tell uh, both state and local and national leaders that finding effective and efficient ways of doing this, you know, what some of the lessons of these last 30 years are. And... Uh, I mean, there are a lot of the things, the things you're talking about. I think this, this thing about the extension is a perfect one. I mean, here we don't need farm extension. I mean, it's not that we don't need farm extension. No, agents, no. But that's not, we're not yeah, a farming Yeah, right, right. What are, yeah, right, we're, right, you know, right. The right. kinds of things you're, yeah, yeah. those are the people that, you know, yeah. the carpenters, the builders. Right, right. Maybe some small farmers. Right, yeah. Small yeah. business people are right. running a convenience store right. or something. Right, They're the ones who, right. we need a farm, we need an extension agency for them. right. Those yeah. kinds of skills. Yeah. You know. right. I don't think anybody's thinking. No. Nobody's uh, talking about something yeah. like that yeah. now as yeah. a way of yeah. really yeah. improving yeah. the quality of life right. and the uh, you know the kind of standard of living of people. Right. But that's a. I mean, that's a politically a, a, a plausible one too because it, you know it kind of fits into things we would you know the country's mentality you know helping small business yeah. people or yeah. I mean providing those kinds of services. Yeah. So those are the kinds of, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we're trying to, you know, to, to, to look for examples. I mean, I think this, this question, this whole thing about cooperatives yeah. is an important one. You know, because yeah. a lot of people say, well, this is the real model we need. Yeah. Well, in some cases it is, but I think your, your lessons are, you know, should be well taken. That, yeah. You know, you can't, you have people have to, you have to educate. That's right. Is a map. Yeah. Is a, it's 
a method of education, right. not just an organization. Right. That's it. Yeah. You've you upset it. Do, yeah, and you have to do you have yeah. to do both of those. It has to go together. Yeah. 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 You see, they used to have a thing that they call a, a, a te some technical assistance being available. Mm -hmm. Well, that technical assistance was to a great extent to do the feasibility study to make sure that the business was going to be economically viable. Yeah. I mean, uh, in those technical terms, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. And where the technical assistance would be needed is to help that businessman on along and to understand why it is so important for his marketing loyalty should remain and to sh help to show him how his equity was going to increase mm -hmm. in that business that he had a part of longevity on and on and on mm -hmm. and something that would have a part of a heritage that he could pass on. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see? Well, the other area here is, is the, I think that's going to be, I mean, one of the things, one of the things that's been most interesting about this study is the importance of health care, mm -hmm. uh, of health services as the kind of focal point in community development. Yeah. And looking yeah. at, whether it's looking here, yeah. whether it's looking in, uh, in Lee County with, yeah. with Ollie Neal, yeah. whether it's Mount Bayou with the with the Delta Health Center or mm -hmm. up in Mud, in Appalachian Mud mm -hmm. Creek. And mm -hmm. Those are really those are examples of things that really did work. Yeah. From yeah. the '60s. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. how did you get? How did you conceive of that as you're, you know, as you're as you're going after trying to build a, something like that? I mean, where where are you getting your ideas? I mean. It, it, Talking to you now, there's a kind of a natural growth, which I, it's interesting because it wasn't true. I don't think. Uh, well, I don't know what I would say, that, but when talking to Ollie Neal and and the and just reading a little bit about it there, it's not clear to me that the kinds of preparatory things have been done in Lee County, Arkansas, to to prepare the community for what I mean. That kind of came in and. People from outside saw those needs. Mm -hmm. No, I ours started. Ours started from right here. Right. And I think that this and about five years. Ours started from the basic community. Yeah. Where where the kids were getting ill uh, from the school bus being out in the rain. Yeah. We started the community started building school bus stop shelter, raising a few dollars here and there. Right. And, and going to knocking on the doors of some of the businessmen around and women in the area and the little stores mm -hmm. say we need we and, and, and the parents started that process right. okay and then people uh, uh, there was a need this dr. Gatch um, in reality identified the Ascaris lumbar corteus problem mm -hmm. And people started sharing and talking about that in in the Bluffton, and some of those people from Buford came to Dr. Gatch's office, and and that mm -hmm. discussion started while they were sitting in the waiting room, inside and outside, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then in the Ridgeland area, he had p patients coming from there, and then um, uh, the state uh, Department of of Health and Environmental Control uh, did a joint study one summer um, with with uh, ta with um, Fis Fis I believe it was I believe it was Fis um, and then that study uh, results was talked about in the community and then there were school principals who were concerned about whether or not this situation could in any way be transported by kids and then it started you know it started into the educational r arena and then guys like Johnny Hill who was principal of Ridgeland got concerned and uh, then a uh, nurse in, in Hardyville who's uh, Sadie Stanny uh, community person named Johnny May Dobson who's still in the area her name is not Dobson now it's something else mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a guy named Lawrence Washington over in Buford, 
Uh, and then it just started, mm -hmm. and then I said, well, look, why don't we all get together and sit down and talk to Gatch and, and try to do an analysis of what's, what's the best approach. Mm -hmm. And then we, 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 after we got together, and, and I was the catalyst, mm -hmm. uh, and then we formed what we call Organization to Prevent Hunger and Malnutrition, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, and then we, we met for several months mm -hmm. uh, in various, not in one place all the time, one time, once we'd meet down there close to that little church, close to where the health clinic is now, mm -hmm. for the convenience of all. And I'd, mm -hmm. I'd get the people, the deacons there, to agree that we could meet there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the next time, we'd meet over in Ridgeland so that, you know, we bring, bring everybody in from that area. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next time, we'd meet over in the, Buford, in the Burton area, the church. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it started like that. And then... Um, Gatch uh, got in touch with uh, with the Kennedys and and McGovern and and and, and then the Kennedys uh, and Hollings reached some compromise at that point that if if the Kennedys didn't stay out of it and then <laughs> Hollings would personally take a look at his own backyard. Um, and uh, then after that, uh, after Hollings came down, he then said, all right, we're going to go to Washington to the McGovern hearing. And that's when the hearings uh, came up in uh, February 18th, 19th, and 20th, 69. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it was after that hearings, we, we shifted from the organization to prevent hunger and malnutrition. Then we, uh, we made a report, Mr. Grant and I, uh, after we came back, and then that's when the group said, all right, uh, if there, since there's a possibility, by that time, a possibility of funds, by that time, uh, the state uh, personnel like Dr. Acock, who was commissioner of health, mm -hmm. were, was keenly aware and, and, and had a very high concern. Excuse me, and then the University of South Carolina School of uh, Epidemiology mm -hmm. had a real keen concern. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, there were a whole lot of other people who had a keen concern, but they were out of the area. Mm -hmm. So then the same group of people called, referred to as OPM, Organization to Prevent Hogan, OPM in place. And that's when the group made a group decision that they were going to organize the Buford Jasper organization mm -hmm. for health care service delivery. And that's when we, they said to me, <laughs> without any money now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they said, all right, Tom, we want you to go down to Mississippi and take a look and bring us a report back as to what's going on down there. And <laughs> so, oh no, oh no, oh no. So, but I was able to get some additional ideas because, uh, as and before I went, we had a meeting and 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 it was interesting. The group laid out trans the things that they really needed: transportation, water. Uh, repair of homes, mm -hmm. you know, all of the things that were in our proposal, mm -hmm. including some transportation for the Fusky, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was just a matter of my going down there, spending my money, <laughs> looking to see what's going on, because by that time, they, they made me chairman of, of that, that, that organization mm -hmm. that was in the formulating stages. And um, I came back and made a report to them, and then I started uh, getting volunteers together to put the pieces of papers together. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you look back at the original papers, the, they were mailed from my box, mm -hmm. post office mm -hmm. box 1057 Hilton Head, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and that's where the first check came, to my box. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the money was deposited 
in the Buford Jasper Comprehensive Health Services account. <laughs> there never was any problems with money, mm -hmm. believe me, mm -hmm. because I worked for them for two years without any pay at, at all. all. Really? Okay, total volunteer. Yeah, amazing. At that point, I was a shrimp fisherman, and I had my shrimp boat out there working, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so I did this mm -hmm. uh, with with a smile, mm -hmm. and um, and I had a lot of lot of lot of uh, positive. Uh, response from the community. So it was not uh, uh, from the native community. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there were people uh, who felt that if it ever got off the ground in two years, the health department would have owned and controlled it. But people were concerned and committed and dedicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm talking about community people, right. and they still are. Yeah. And we had community meetings. We divided the, 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 the two counties into 19 target areas. Mm -hmm. We did it mm -hmm. as a team. Mm -hmm. And each area had their representative who would religiously attend those meetings to make sure that their area did not get left out of the planning process. Right. Okay? Right. Now, that's true community leadership and community involvement. Right. I mean. Right. I mean, and, and Emory will tell you, when he came back here, mm -hmm. they were still organized. And right. they operated for many, many years. Right. Okay? When the first community workers were chosen, they were chosen from those 19 target areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those community workers had to apply for from those communities. And they were sent up to a larger screening process. Mm -hmm. And if the community people didn't send them up, then they were not considered. No one could just jump in there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The people wanted people who were responsible back to the young and old in their respective target area. So they were being elected. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only elected to serve on the council mm -hmm. and the board, but to be workers. They were well, first chosen you. from the communities. Uh -huh. Okay? And that's the way it was done. Mm -hmm through that process. Mm -hmm. So everybody was responsible back. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And ever so often, there were community meetings to give updates mm -hmm. back and forth as to what, 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 what was happening. Mm -hmm. And when transportation got going, there were constant input on you know, where problems exist, and this one was missed, mm -hmm. and that whole process of drivers coming from the community, mm -hmm. even from the general areas, you see, who knew the area, mm -hmm. who knew the people, who knew where people were, mm -hmm. back in the little roads and the bad roads and, and, and what have you, mm -hmm. you see. So this was a, a real grassroot, native grassroot growth process. Yeah. And that made the organization stable. Yeah. And it made it exciting. Mm -hmm. And it made it workable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, occasionally we had people that would make an effort to try to tear things up or to try to run things or dictate things. But, you know, there were strong enough community people not to allow that kind of thing to happen. So you didn't, have to, you didn't really have to no. worry about that. No, yeah. no, no. Did the no. people start... It, it, was it true in, in here as it was in Mount Bayou, for instance, that, that well, I think maybe you even said this, that there was more than just kind of health care or sickness on people's minds. They there had a lot of water needs, housing needs, mm -hmm. okay, road needs, okay. I mean, all these things came directly from the people. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't have outdoor toilets. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what they needed more than yeah. a doctor. Yeah. For but the doctor, you know, it got put together to the extent that a doctor could write a prescription. Mm -hmm. If a person was in a wheelchair, there were no wheelchair ramps for a person to get from inside the house to the outside, mm -hmm. except two or three people lifting that person up you know what I mean? Right. And okay. so, in, in, in the in the whole process, there was um, 
a, a, a process that that a doctor could write a prescription to environmental health to put a wheelchair ramp there, and that could, that was done. <laughs> if the doc, if the family health worker found that the roof was pouring down water, mm -hmm. and you had an asthmatic patient, mm -hmm. then you know, it was exciting for the doctor to be able to write a prescription for environmental health to fix that roof. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But they, they had certain limits. They couldn't go and build a whole, you know, I mean, yeah. repair it to the point where it was livable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And they're writing those on their little prescription. Yeah. That must have been a new, Yeah. that was a great new role for them. Yeah. Yeah, and you found we had lots of doctors coming through here that was very excited about that process. Yeah, yeah. And they got a lot of people better. Yeah. But over a period of years, that went away. Mm -hmm. Okay? And people's health condition gradually slipped back. Mm -hmm. and it's, you know. What was the problem in maintaining that kind of, I mean, I know money, the withdrawal of money, the federal government kept doing that. Was also there was there a loss of enthusiasm in these communities too? Was it hard to maintain that kind of democratic spirit in the same way as it was with the co-ops? Or no, no, that 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 was there when I left you for Jasper Comprehensive Health in 1980. Uh -huh. Now after I left, uh, the board and the president executive director did not follow through with all those community meetings. Because, see, I was very community-based oriented. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I stayed in touch with the grassroots. Yeah. And uh, so they, they, the board elected after. And they didn't, by the way, they did not put me out. I made the decision mm -hmm. to leave mm -hmm. and make a change. Mm -hmm. I thought they needed, and I left them in good shape. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They had money. Mm -hmm. they had, I had put the facilities in place. Mm -hmm. They had the budget in place. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, for my own, <laughs> yeah. move you know, I, I needed to pass the baton, yeah. and I'm and I'm happy that I did that. Yeah. And as a result, I have uh, the staff uh, pulled together several of my of my community reports mm -hmm. that I had made uh, to the board. You see, mm -hmm. uh, and they gave me this after I left. Oh, well, that's nice. Okay, this was up through June of 1980. Uh -huh. See, this was my, uh, this was my, these were my reports to the to the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, and then it started. They 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 started them. I don't think they got the very first one. This started in January. 31st, 1973, mm -hmm. but there were reports prior to that, mm -hmm. but they didn't pick those up. But I'll uh, have to see, we're going up, we're going to go though, we've already been up once to look at the records at the National Archives uh, from the OEO. Yeah. And we'll find, we'll find these early reports, and I'll send you copies of them when I do. Well, that would be very yeah, rewarding. Have a full thing. That would be very yeah, rewarding. I just, I just went through. I, I didn't look at South Carolina because I yeah, didn't have much time. Yeah, I just looked yeah, through Mississippi. Yeah. See, for example, Sheldon Satellite. See, mm -hmm. the first guy, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. See, see, I give reports to the board on. See. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything that's going on. Yeah. That's fantastic. See, facilities, Hardyville, Central facilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fundraising. Okay. Those are great. See. I mean, I, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't try. I mean, I wore out two vehicles yeah. at my own expense uh -huh. during the time that I worked with this organization. Yeah. See here, the wells in the Bull Hill area. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's talking about water wells. Right. Okay, wells in the Pritchardville area. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's a health need. That's right. right. No, I'm pointing out to you in writing and print mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can find mm -hmm. at Beaver Jasper Comprehensive Health, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Insulation of 33 wells. Wow. This was May 18th, 1973. Mm -hmm. Bids were open. This is for the Levy Limehouse Belinja Hill area, mm -hmm. an area that's a growing community now. Mm -hmm. 
They've even upgraded those 33 wells mm -hmm. to a central system mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I mean, I, it, there, there it is. Right. All right? Okay. See here? I attended a meeting in Washington, uh, all right? I attended a meeting in Washington, D.C. on May 31st, 1973 with officials from OEO representatives. Mm -hmm. State Congressional District Representative. See, talking about water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, huh? Mm -hmm. It's National Demonstration Water Project. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah, no, that's, that's great to have them. Well, I'll have to, find the, I'll have to find some of the earlier ones and uh, yeah. send them back to you. Yeah. Well, whatever yeah. reports were, yeah. were yeah. written that went yeah. to Washington. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, you're not going to find an awful lot grass nitty-gritty this was directly to the board uh but um i don't know you know how much you'll find but i would be very interested in seeing what yeah. you have what yeah. you find when you go up there yeah. but um but 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 then it goes into facilities and, mm -hmm. and it, it follows a complete pattern mm -hmm. okay <laughs> now those uh, do they have those over there they've got all these original reports I would, the, yes, uh, well, now, I cannot tell you where yeah. you're going to find yeah. these kind of reports yeah. because... Uh, it might be good to, to Xerox them. I might, might want to Xerox some of those. Or something. I, did, I didn't agree to let you have this. No, I know you. Ah! At some point, it might come back. And, uh, come back I, and, I, and, I, I, I agree to talk with you, though. I didn't say I was going to give you all my goodies. Uh, but that'd be good to have keep a record of that with all the no, this is kind of a, a fun thing yeah. to, to me because I have not stopped. When I left the health center as far as professional involvement, I agree that that was, you know, only if I'm called to give, mm -hmm. and I'm, I've been called very, 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 very few times mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on anything. And the records financially, like I say, thank God, was clean, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And I left it in good hands, mm -hmm. and um, and the people there are very capable, local men. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, I think they were very fortunate because he came up through the ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, he's professional, mm -hmm. um, but he, he he started out. He was recruited back here after he got out of college, mm -hmm. after he got his master's, mm -hmm. and um, so he was reasonably well train and ready to to make that move. Uh, One of the things Emory was telling me today about all the people that you trained over there who were, he was saying you could go into any office in this whole area around here, any county office, any city <laughs> office, any government office, or any of these, you know, these uh, non-profits. Yeah. There's somebody in working in there, so yeah. there's the leader or yeah. somebody yeah. in there that yeah. came through in that 10 years that y'all yeah. were there. Yeah. Yeah. I did it. That, I, that, I, organization. that was a part of my mission. Yeah. I, I I laid that out as a part of my mission. And that kind of yeah. I yeah. I think that that kind of leadership yeah. development and mm -hmm. training that mm -hmm. you gave in those mm -hmm. situations is mm -hmm. as important a legacy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as the actual improvements yeah. in health care. Yeah. yeah. Because those people yeah. have a multiplier effect. That's they right. go out in That's right. where they work in right. the welfare yeah. office, yeah. And health. Yeah. And yeah. 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 And those people are critical yeah. to the yeah. to the whole system. Yeah. You take the man heads up DSS. Yeah. He came through. Yeah. The guy present guy at Comp Health. He came through. Yeah. Uh, you take the guy heads up EMS for the entire county. Mm -hmm. This county. Mm -hmm. He came through that mm -hmm. process. You take Emory. Mm -hmm. Brought him back. That's here, right. That's you see. Right. And and I could keep on going. Right. You see. Right. <laughs> Well, I see, I think that's but, uh, a, this is a this is a yeah, very important yeah, thing yeah, that needs yeah, to yeah. needs to be publicized, yeah, and yeah. that people in these situations yeah. today need to realize yeah. is part of their responsibility, yeah. not just yeah. providing right. services. Right, to people. right, right. That's because that's a lot of them. That's right. They get in there, and they, right. yeah. you know, particularly yeah. the money yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. we yeah. just got to make yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Jones yeah. well, as opposed to how can we. Yeah. Get Mrs. Jones community organized to right. 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 help her right. get well right. and also right. train her, get right. her granddaughter interested in doing it. That's right. And that's kind of the, yeah. see, I think yeah. that's the, yeah. one of the yeah. legacies here that's yeah. really important. Yeah. 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 That was a part of my mission. Yeah. 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 And I, well, and I felt I carried that out yeah. to the maximum yeah. that I could. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, I think that's been, I mean, that's one of the big successes here. Yeah. Yeah. And why this right. health center right. Right. still functions right. as well as it does. Right. And you see, all those people have their own professional roles within their organization, but they have a, a common bond of working togetherness mm -hmm. that develop mm -hmm. way back. Mm -hmm. And they laugh about it when they see me, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Part of their training. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and oh, yeah. And yeah. I think the ones yeah. who... Yeah. The perceptive ones understand that. A lot of times it's these new people yeah. that have come right. down, they've right. gone off, right. they got all right. educated. Yeah. 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 It takes yeah. a while, it takes a longer yeah. time to train them yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that right. they should be. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well,